Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode and today's talk about is all about listening to your heart and with that I've got a fantastic guest for you Dr. Tracy Johnson from Georgia and we're talking about intuition, opening your heart, removing emotional mental blocks and really just talking about the heart, the soul. And um with that, I'm happy to introduce Dr. Tracy. Welcome Dr. Tracy. Hello, thank you so much and greetings to you and everyone. I really appreciate again once uh, once again to have an opportunity to share my message and assist those who are listening in terms of taking a truthful journey into their heart and experiencing who they are. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what a fantastic uh, journey. And, um, you know, talk about your background and how you came to be doing what you're doing. Well, for me, and I always share with individuals, what started me on my journey was the fact that I was always in emotional pain. And I had gotten to a point where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of just experiencing being sad and my heart feeling so heavy. Mm-hmm. So one day I I pretty much cried out from the depths of my soul, please, you know, God, please help me, help me to understand what's going on within my heart and what do I need to do in order to experience uh, the joy and peace in my life and on my journey. Oh. So that's where it actually started. And I can, you know, share more in terms of the rest of my journey as far as that is concerned. But that's what what caused me. That was the catalyst of me experiencing emotional pain all the time. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I I can, you know, relate to that. And, you know, sometimes it's like, uh, I'm not sure if it's, uh, you know, the universe or your spirit or whatever. And then they give you guidance and, you know, you feel this sense of calm and peace. And what's very interesting is... um, you're talking about this um idea so you have um you know a couple talking points that we have is um you we talked about your journey into your heart now talk about your mission is to an open heart world and um so what is that and um and uh, talk about the power of love well um open heart world the mission our mission is to assist in restoring the power of love in the heart of humanity mm-hmm. and one of the ways in which uh, we do this, or I do that, I created um, processes and things to help individuals to identify the emotions that's blocking them from experiencing all that they are and were created to be. Mm. Now, when I shared in terms of my journey and I cried out from the depths of my soul in terms of, you know, asking God to help me with what I was experiencing. One of the questions that I also ask is that I ask God, what is love? What is love really? Because I had um, experienced a great deal of emotional pain, being um, disillusioned and and disappointed as a result of looking for love in all the wrong places, meaning looking for love outside of myself. Mm. And so most often, like when I have a question on my heart before I go to sleep at night, when I um, wake up in the morning before I become fully awakened, I receive an answer, whatever answer, whatever question I have, I will receive an answer to my question. And that this one particular evening, it was my the question I was on my heart. What is love really? And when I woke up that morning, I heard loud and clear. This is what changed my life forever is that love is all there is. It is the creative power of God, which gives life to everything and everyone. It is experienced and expressed in many different ways, but to the degree in which your heart is open to allow love from the inside out will be the degree in which you will have experienced it and have the capacity to express it. Mm-hmm. And and I heard that that morning and I was so excited and I wrote it down because I didn't want to lose sight of it. Mm-hmm. But the key to it all and what I received in that moment, it was like to the degree in which your heart is open to allow it from the inside out. And that that love is not an emotion. Love is is the power that has been given to us to create our reality. And so, so often people 
have this this definition of love in terms of it pointing to an emotion or a feeling. It's not about that. It's actually your power, your mm-hmm. power to create. And I know there's like many of us, we learn about the law of attraction, you know, in terms of, you know, tr- attracting things into our lives. But when I did my course studies in terms of obtaining my dissertation, mm-hmm. I studied every aspect of the heart. And one of the things that I learned is that your heart creates a magnetic field that attracts things to you. That's the true law of attraction. So if your heart is emotionally blocked, then you it will take you longer to attract what it is that you choose or desire in your life or you will create a miss. When I say create a miss, like if your heart is emotionally blocked and you're not totally clear in terms of what it is that you actually choose to manifest in your life. So that's what love is to me. It's the creative power that gives life and that uh, we've been given to create our reality. Interesting. So, you know, one question I have is, uh, you know, this very profound concept and i'm interested in the application of it so how do you know when you talk about aware of and listening to your heart and you're able to identify and clear emotional blocks what does that look like what is that process you know what does that feel like well one of the things that i've (laughs) created is called the air heart scan process Mm -hmm. and air it's called air because one, we can't live without air. We all know that we can't. If we don't have air, we're going to die. So that was one of the things. And the, it's, it, the air is, is an acronym. It points to the three areas in our life um, that affect us the most. So A stands for abundance, not just financial abundance, but abundance across the board. For example, peace or joy and forgiveness. The I stands for your inner journey. Inner journey, meaning um, connecting and experiencing the essence of who you truly are, like your purpose and your power and things of that nature. And then the R stands for relationship. And the first and most important relationship is with yourself and then across the board with others. So with the air heart scan process, it has three, three steps. The first step is being able to identify what layer of love needs your attention? Now, when I say layer of love, the layer of love points to your experience and the manifestation of love or power within your heart. And in which in each um, step, there are three, there are 12 different aspects. OK, so, for example, if we say a layer of love could be peace. So that layer of love points to the peace and a manifestation of it within your heart. The second step is to identify the emotional block that's keeping you from fully experiencing peace, for example, like in terms of the layer of love. And the third part is your call to action. What is it that I need to do in order to clear that emotional block that's being revealed to me? So what I will just give you an example in terms of how the process unfolds. Mm -hmm. I created it because I wanted those who are with serving or assisting and going taking an inward journey into their heart to help them to see and know that they can receive from within their heart the guidance in terms of what to do and how to move forward in clearing the the emotional block so they can experience the fullness of their power so mm-hmm. for example again if we if your heart reveals to you that the layer of of peace needs your attention meaning pointing to the layer of love and then it the next step is it reveals to you that that what's causing you or keeping you from experiencing peace is anger. And then the the, the call to action. And I'll give you an example because I had to go through the process myself. One of the call to actions that's within the, the 12 um, parts in the um, the call to action or your what I would call the call to love is. I receive make choices and decisions that are in alignment with who you are, what's important to you and what resonates within your heart. So that's just an example of one of them. And most often when I'm I'm being interviewed by someone, I will use the the um, the host as a guinea pig. And if your heart is open to receive, I can do a heart scan for you. And then that way you can have that experience and then allow your guests to see how 
it, the process actually works. So would you like to try a hard scan on air or you you would like to wait, do it offline? Would you like to experience the hard scan? Well, uh, you know, the in the sake of time, you know, there's uh, what's interesting is uh, we can direct the audience to like yes, think and, to um, experience it. OK, yeah. yes, that'll be great because, yes, I know we have like it was just total of 30 minutes. So that'll be great. We, I can share that later on so we can move forward. Excellent. Um, so one question is uh, this idea, um, you know, what you're talking about is really sounds like kind of universe and, um, you know, some people call it uh, Dharma and uh, some people call it the universe. It's interesting how you reference the heart. And uh, my first question is, what makes you reference the heart? And then also when you men men mentioned love, this conjures different images. So some people may think it's romantic. You know, it's really interesting how you relate love to financial abundance or um, so talk about how you why you reference the heart. Well, for me, when I say the heart, it's the part of you that's one with all the total time, uh, everything. It's like some of us call it spirit. Some call it God. It's the part of you that it it, it is your life force where your life force comes through. It, we can live without a brain, but we can't live without a heart, correct? Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about the heart, it's the part of you that goes beyond this, this physical um, dimension, correct? I look at the heart as being like a portal, uh, a place in which you can enter into your full power and potentiality. And so that's the reason why when I talk about love, because when love is coming through you, it's not, you know, so often we look outside of ourselves to experience love, but it comes through us. It comes through us. And when we love someone, it, it, we're the ones that experience it first. So that's the reason why I look at it from that perspective, because when I was growing up, I was grow, grew up under uh, Christianity and I learned a lot about um, the Bible and different uh, scriptures. And so it that was like the foundation of me and my experience of, of what love is and, and how our heart is, is everything. It mm. points to that in so many different um, passages when it talks about, you know, loving the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit. So that was the beginning of my journey. But when I went deeper, into yeah. it that's when i came to the realization in terms of where i am today oh interesting it's basically different representations of you know spirit and the universe and you know it's interesting how you came to the heart which is the first time i've heard of this i mean not heard of it but kind of you using a system so question is um a lot of the audience are asking what is blocking the flow and experience of unconditional love in and through our lives like what what, what blocks it well the and what i call them are low level emotions okay because what happens is your feelings is the language of your soul or you know going back to how your heart communicates to you so when we look at the feelings, right? That's what it points to when you're having an experience. Your feelings equal, first of all, what you believe. Your beliefs affects your thoughts and your thoughts affect your emotions. So those three things equal your feelings. And so when we look at that, if you, and when I talk about emotional blocks, one of the things that I want to make clear is that when I receive the revelation that love is all there is, Mm -hmm. I don't see anything as bad. I just see that there are different levels of good. So the emotional block is not ne isn't necessarily something negative. It's just love turned inside out. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about emotional blocks, point two, for example, anger, frustration, fear is the foundation of it. Bitterness, mm -hmm. unforgiveness, those are the different emotional blocks that keep us from experiencing again what i call the layers of love one time when i did a, my own heart scan my heart revealed to me that i was bitter and i was taken aback because i'm the heart heart doctor how can i be bitter 
But then when I went, took a deeper dive, it was revealed to me that bitterness equals frustration, anger, and fear. And I was like, oh, Yes, I am definitely bitter. If those are the elements of that experience of bitterness that I am, and that was blocking my peace. That was blocking my peace. When I had anger and frustration, it took my peace away. And so that's what I mean when I'm talking about emotional blocks. And one of the ways, like like when I take the individuals on a journey in terms of the heart scan process, what I do is I have you connect with your heart. You put your hand on your heart and you pay attention. And I allow, you know, I created um, some heart scan um, cards. And that's what I use when I'm doing the heart scan process. See, I'll show you an example. These are cards that I use when I'm doing the heart scan. And so, for example, I put this up on the back here. This is a layer of love. Trust is a layer of love. It's an experience of love and manifest manifestation of love in your heart when you trust right so there's 12 different parts within each layer so when i'm doing the heart scan i'm having you put your hand on your heart and i connect with your heart because i'm known as the heart communicator and so we just go through the process and you you're able to find out in the three different areas whether it's abundance in a journey or relationship which area needs your attention which layer is blocking your love your experience of love not just for us we need to understand that everything that we experience we experience it in and through our hearts so if our hearts are emotionally blocked guess what it's going to affect our our experience in our relationships you know experience within you know even experience of ourselves so that's that's the that's where you know when we are i call it hyper aware of our inner space then we don't continue to create emotional blocks because what one of the things that i do is i have i i have a, a four steps in to that i provide to individuals and i'll share it here in terms of shifting into unconditional love when you're experiencing emotional blocks in order for you to clear it and to be able to shift from that space the first thing you need to do is you stop you stop in that moment most often when we have emotional pain or our hearts are heavy we'll just you know try to avoid it We'll do anything and everything so that we wouldn't avoid, so that we don't uh, experience it. And I was guilty of that. So you stop, you acknowledge what you're experiencing. You don't judge it. You just acknowledge that you're you're angry in the moment. Don't judge it. And then you 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 stop. You acknowledge it. You accept it. And then you love yourself through it. Mm. And so that's where the heart scan process comes through because. Most often people don't know how to love themselves. They don't know what love looks like or feels like. And that's one of the main reasons why we continue to live our life and go through life with it, carrying emotional blocks in our hearts because we don't know how to love ourselves. And we don't truly understand what love is. And love is all about unconditionality. That's the reason why in the four steps I said, um, accept, acknowledge and accept it. Don't judge it. Just stop and look at it and allow it to flow through you instead of you pushing up against it and creating most emo emotional blocks. Because when you when you resist it, it just builds up, builds up, builds up and within your heart. And that's what creates the emotional blocks. Mm -hmm. I love that. How can people um, contact you, follow you, reach out to you, um, check out your work, etc.? Okay, the my website address is openheartworld.com. It's O P E N H E A R T W O R L D dot com. Yeah. Openheartworld.com. And on my website is information in terms of the different workshops that I do. Um is one of them is called Connecting Paint. And then if there are your listeners are interested in obtaining a heart scan in order to find out what are the emotional blocks and what they need to do in order to clear them, that information is on there as well. It's, it's under the heart specialist. And when you click the button, learn more, it'll give you more information. Your listeners can uh, 
schedule a heart scan and I would love to be able to serve them and help them to see what are the emotional blocks and how to love themselves in order to clear it. And yeah, and for all the audience out there, let's thank Dr. Tracy for coming on and uh, dropping a lot of wisdom and be sure to give her a like and follow on all of her social media channels, reach out to her, check out her work. And um, with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity.